Hello everyone, welcome back to Important Question Solved series. This is Unit 2 of Professional Practice Law and Ethics. Let us see the important questions in Unit 2. These are all the important questions in Unit 2. Let us start with the first question. Define offer. How offer can be made? What are all the rules of valid offer? The first thing is you have to understand the question. If you understand the question, you can easily write down the answer because this is a theory subject. Clear? Let us solve. An offer is a personal made by one person to another. Clear? This is made by one person to another. Showing willingness to enter into a contract on certain terms. Let us see what are all the certain terms. The rules of valid offer. Offer must be create legal obligation. It should create the legal obligations. The terms must be clear and definite. Offer must be communicated to the offeree. It must be made with the intention to accept and form a contract. Clear? Offer can be specific which means one person. General means public. Offer should not contain uncertain things. If it contains the uncertain things, it is not an offer. Special terms must be clearly communicated in the offer. Offer, uh, offer must not be made under force that force or the threat. It should not be made under force or th threat. If it is made under force or threat, it is not an offer. The person making the offer can withdraw it before acceptance. Before accepting that offer, he has to withdraw that offer. Offer must follow rules of law and should not be illegal. Offer should be legal and it has to follow the rules of law. This is the offer, the rules of offer. How an offer can be made? A written offer. For example, it might be a written offer, oral or verbal offer, communication, the oral or verbal offer by conduct, which means by actions through advertisements also, it can be made. The offer can be made in made through the advertisements also by email or electronic communication. By email also, the offer can be made. Clear with this? If you understand something, then you can easily write down by your own. And the next question is define acceptance. Who can accept an offer? And what are all the types of acceptance? This is the question. First of all, what is acceptance? It is a agreeing to the terms of an offer, which means accepting is a agreeing. I am agreeing to the terms of an offer, leading to the formation of valid contract. Clear? Types of acceptance. Let us see Extra, uh, express acceptance, which means spoken or written type. Clear? Implied acceptance means through actions or conduct. Clear? Conditional acceptance, which means some conditions are there with that acceptance. Absolute acceptance without any changes. The absolute acceptance. How the offer is there, you will accept as it is. If you do any conditions, then it is conditional acceptance. And the next one is acceptance by post or letter. You are accepting by the post or a letter. Acceptance by email or online mode. You are accepting that by the offer by email or the online mode. Acceptance by performance in general offer. This is a general offers, performance. Late acceptance means after time limit, which means you are accepting that, uh, that lately. There is a certain limit for that offer. You are taking that delay. That's why it is invalid. Counter offer, which means new terms are there. It is also not an acceptance. Silent acceptance means there is no response. That's why it is not valid. Let us see who can accept an offer. Only the person or group to whom the offer was made. For example, if I am giving to one group or person, one particular person, that person only can accept the offer. If it is a general offer, anyone who fulfills the condition can accept. For example, if I am a giveaway offer on YouTube, then anyone can access it. Anyone can accept that offer. Clear? This is who can accept an offer. If it is a specific person or group, only that person or group can access. Or else, if it is a general offer, anyone who fulfills the condition, then the person accept that offer. Clear with this? If you understand something, you can write it by your own answer a sentence. The third question is define consideration. State its importance. What is the importance of consideration? What are the different forms or types of considerations? Consideration is something of value exchanged between parties. For example, if I tell something, the party has to give some value and consider that. That is consideration. The value exchanged between the parties, that is consideration, such as money, goods, services or the promise. They have to consider those. Importance of consideration, it is essential for a valid contract. It is consider contract based, shows mutual benefit for both parties. Here, the money, goods, the service, anything which is beneficial for both the parties. That is consideration. Here, it prevents free or one-sided agreements. Here, it prevents the free one-sided agreements. It is both-side agreement. Clear? And it creates the legal obligations. It helps to identify what each party gives and gets. Provides proof of the agreement. Protects against the fraud men. Fraud men are forced contract because both the parties are agreeing with this. With these considerations. That's why. It protect against fraud land and forced contracts. 
supports the fairness in the contract. There is a fairness in that contract. That's why it is very important, the consideration. It ensures the contact. Contract is enforceable by law. Helps settle disputes in court. Don't worry if you don't remember these things. Whatever you understood, you can easily write it by your own and make a sentence of that. Based on the marks, you have to write. Remember this. Let us see the different forms and types of the consideration. I have told money, goods and services are the different forms of consideration. And past consideration is also a type of consideration. Present, future. Clear? And the next question is, what is capacity to contract? Explain about competent and incompetent person to contract. Here, capacity to contract means the legal ability of a person to enter into a valid contract. Which means a legal person, whoever it is. Legal ability of a person to enter into a valid contract. Here, incompetent person means minors who are below 18 years. That is incompetent person. Persons of unsound mind. Mentally ill persons are incompetent and drunken are intoxicated persons. Disqualified persons and alien enemies foreign surveillance with the restrictions and convicts, companies or organizations with authority, persons under legal guardianship. These are all the incompetent persons. Let us see the competent person who can compete, who, are, who has the legal ability. Let us see who are above 18 years. They are competent person who are the sound of mind, which means they have the knowledge about that clearly, who are not disqualified by any law, which means they have not done any illegal things. They are also competent persons. If you understood something, then you can easily write down to this question. Let us move to the next question. That is, what do you understand by consent and free consent? Discuss various flaws in free consent. Consent means both parties agreeing on the same thing in the same sense. For example, if I have two groups, two parties, the two parties are agreeing with the same thing in the same sense. That is consent. Clear? Free consent means consent given without any pressure. The consent without any pressure, threat, mistake, fraud or misruptions. This is a free consent. Let us see the flaws in the free consent. If a free consent is have done, what are all the flaws in that free consent? Coercion, which means using force or threat. They may use the force or threat after the free consent. And your influence, which means taking advantage of position. If both parties agree with the same thing, then they might have take advantage of misrepresentation. This is a false statement without intention to cheat. After that, mistake can be done after free consent. That is misunderstanding of facts. Lack of mental capacity. Pressure from the others, hidden facts and wrongful silence, any act or, uh, that affects the voluntary decision. These are all the flaws of free consent. If free consent has done, then these are all the flaws of this. If you understood something, you can easily write, write down, no problem. Then define contingent contract. Discuss the rules concerning the contingent contract. Here the contingent contract is a contract that depends on the happening or non-happening of a future uncertain event. It is completely depends on the happening or non-happening of a future uncertain events. Let us see the rules of contingent contracts. The event must be uncertain. I have told you the event must be uncertain. The event must be separate to the contract. Contract becomes enforceable only when the event happens. If the event becomes impossible, the contract becomes void. If the event is not happen, contract is valid when non-happening is certain. If dependent on the person's act, must be possible to perform the event. event. Parties must clearly specify the event. No enforcement before the event occurs. If event involves time limit, rules apply after expiry of time. Rules doesn't apply before the time limit uh, completes. It must be lawful and not based on illegal activity. These are all the rules of contingent contract. If you understood, you can easily write down in your own words. And next question is what is performance of contract? Discuss the types of performance and Types of tender. Performance of contract means fulfilling the promises. If you fulfill the promise and obligations stated in the contract. If you fulfill those promises and the obligations stated in the contract, it is called as performance of performance of contract. Clear? The types of tender. Valid tender, invalid, tender of goods, tender of payment, partial tender, tender at proper time, tender at proper place, continuous tender, tender before due date, joint tender. These are all the types of tender. And types of performance means actual and attempted performance these are all the types of performance if you understood the types then you can easily write down the definition for each one clear write it by your own no problem you will get marks for that and the next question is discuss the meaning and modes of the discharge of contract discharge of contract means the contract comes to an end and parties are released from their obligations this is a discharge of contract the modes of discharge by performance 
completing the by mutual agreement which means both the parties agree to end or after the contract by innovation by precision by alternation by remission by weaver by lapse of time by impossibility by breach here by innovation means replacing old contract with new contract precision means concealing the cancelling the contract alternation means changing the terms of the contracts remission means accepting the lesser performance of the contract weaver means giving up rights lapse of time means contract expires after the time limit impossibility means when performance becomes impossible and by breach means when one party breaks the promise this is a breach these are all the modes of discharge if you remember this you can easily write down the meaning of that and the next question is what do you mean by breach of contract discuss the remedies for breach of contract here i have told you breach means when one party break the promise that is breach if you know this one sentence you can easily write down by your own once again i'll explain this in short breach of contract occurs when one party fails to perform the promise promised obligations same as previous the remedies for breach means damages damages may happen that is monetary compensation nominal damages the small amount for symbolic loss they have to give the small amount for that symbolic loss and special damages compensation for the special loss they have to give that and exemplary damages punishment type damage damages are given the remedies specific uh, performance the court orders party to perform the party has to perform the court orders injunction which means court order stopping wrongful act rescission means cancelling the contract restitution restoring benefits taken and quantum merit which means payment for work already done and suit for price means for goods sold but unpaid these are all the remedies for breach when the parties fail to perform the promise oblig uh, promised obligations these are all the remedies they have to perform and the next question is what is the contract of indemnity discuss the commencement of indemnifiers liability and rights of the indemnity holders when sued the contract of indemnity is a contract where one party promises to protect the other from loss caused by the someone else which means when one party the we have two parties one party promise to protect other party from the loss caused by any person clear the rights of indemnity holder which means one party right to cover all damages they have to cover all the damages right to recover all legal costs right to recover all sums paid under compromise right to full protect from losses they have to protect from losses damages costs and under co compromises and right to claim personal expense incurred and right to damage performance when applicable and right to sue indemnify if payment is avoided and right to cover indirect loss if covered right to be fully compensated not just a partial it is fully compensated right to legal remedies for non payment these are all the rights of indemnity holder clear the one party who promises to protect the other party this is a right of that party and commencement of liability here liability begins when the indemnity holder suffers the loss after that indemnifier must pay as soon as the loss becomes clear if the loss is clear then they have to pay that as soon as possible payment must be made even before actual payment by the indemnity holder it has to it has to be made before the actual uh, before the actual payment by the indemnity holder and liability starts when the court orders compensation it has to start after court order compensation liability begins when the conditions of indemnity occurs clear let us move to the next question what is contract of agency what are all the essential of relationship of agency state the rules of agency the first one is contract of agency which means appointing a person that is agent appointing an agent to act on behalf of another which means he will act on behalf of principal the essentials means free consent principal must be competent agent can be minor good faith representative capacity these are all the essentials the rules are act of agent which is equal to act of principal principal is bound by agent acts and agent must follow the instructions okay here the rules are principal is principal is a bound of agent acts that is the agent must has to follow the instructions of that principal after that maintain the accounts show skill and care no secret profit clear which means no illegal activities this is the contract of agency agent sales and the rules let us move to the next question that is write a short note on sale of goods act 1939 contract of sale what are all the essential elements or general principle of contract of sale they must be a buyer and seller this is the short note on sale of goods act that is 1930 contract of sale there must be a buyer and seller the subject matter must be good that is movable item 
there must be a price money consideration should be there there should be a valid offer you know what is valid offer and acceptance as well parties must be competent to contract you know what is competent also goods may be existing or future goods purpose is transfer of ownership from the seller to buyer there must be an agreement or delivery of goods payment terms must be clearly agreed the contract must be for lawful purpose which is there is no illegal activities the law lawful purpose these this is a 1930 contract of sale and the essential elements or general principles of contract of a sale clear the next question is define condition and warranty here the condition means the condition is a major term of the contract whenever the contract is happening the condition is must and should the major term it is essential to the purpose of the contract the warranty means warranty is a minor term of the contract it is not essential to the main purpose the warranty is not the uh, the it is not the major term it is minor term and it is not for the main purpose clear after that distinguish between them we have to differentiate between the condition and warranty if you write in the tableau form it it will be very easy for the evaluator to correct time assign the marks for that here condition you know major term of the contract it is a minor term of the contract essential to the contract this is much needed and it is not essential to the contract buyer can reject goods and claim damages he can reject the goods if there is any damage in the warranty buyer can only claim the damage cannot reject the goods for example if i take any particular goods or anything any uh, product then it will uh, then there will be warranty then if there any damage is there they will correct it and give it back i cannot reject the product back in the warranty the purpose of condition is directly affects the performance of contract here the condition is directly affects the performance of contract it supports the main purpose warranty supports the main purpose and the legal seriousness it is more serious and warranty is less serious because if there is any damage they will correct it and give back i cannot reject the goods here clear and they have asked state when the condition is treated as warranty here when the condition is treated as warranty the condition is treated as warranty in the following cases let us see when the buyer chooses the chooses to accept the goods even after breach of condition breach means when one party fails the promise after that also choose to accept the goods clear the first condition and the second one is when the contract is not separatable and rejecting the goods is not possible this is one more condition and when the buyer has weighed the condition voluntarily this is another condition these are all the conditions treated as warranty clear with this these are all the questions i have explained in this video in simple way if you understand the question then you can easily write down the answers in your own way whatever you understood because this is the theory exam you can easily write by whatever you know clear and i will attach the notes this notes below this video just click that link and follow the notes clear if you found this video helpful then subscribe to shiva prayesh world for more videos like this and if you want me to explain any particular subject or topic comment and let me know thank you very much share this video thank you